Hi everyone, welcome to week one of Imitations to Play, Learn, and Grow Weekly. This is something new that I am starting, and I am going to go live each week, and I am going to share invitations for you to use with kids between the ages of 2 and 10 that will guide you through using clay to learn and build new skills. I have a few activities that I'm going to show you that I have set up that I actually used earlier this morning, but the majority of this episode is going to be, and each episode I should say, um, I'm going to share tips, tools, and my top 10 favorite activities on that week's topic. My name is Teresa, and I am your creativity producer and professional mess maker. I want to thank you for joining me, and I hope that you have a lot of fun with these activities, and I hope that from week to week you will share your favorite activities with us on each topic as well. I am going to go ahead and get started. This week, we are talking about science skills. So, I have a few tips for using play to build science skills. You can use play to build science skills around all sorts of different topics, or learning areas. Um, so the tips and the tools that I'm going to share are going to be a few of my favorites that I've used over the years um, that I recycle over and over and over again and change up based on the group that I'm working with, their individual interest. So tip number one is, uh, I'm sorry, tool number one for building science skills using play is bugs and animals. Bugs and animals is one of my favorite themes that I have taught on over the years. Um, Whether I'm talking to a a group of parents or I'm teaching in front of a classroom of young children or a combination thereof, I've done them all. But bugs and animals are two of the most fun and the most engaging uh, activities. You can switch it up and you can get, oddly enough, a wide age range of kids involved in the same activity that involves this topic. So some of the specific things that you can study that tie into either bugs or animals are different parts of a bug or different parts of an animal. Like talking about animals that have fur versus animals that have skin. Or um, talking about body parts that all animals have in common. Or that all insects have in common. Do all insects or all animals have bones? That's um, something that kids are usually surprised to find out the answer to, which I won't give away here in this video. So bugs and plants is one uh, tool that you can use when studying science and using play to do so with young kids. Another one is plants. Plants is a fun an engaging topic as well because you can bring real life experiences into the learning when you're studying plants whether that's going out into the woods or a city park and going on a plants scavenger hunt you can talk about the different parts of a plant does each type of plant whether it's a flower or a food plant have the same type of parts? How do they start to grow? Do they all grow from the same thing? 
do they all go through the same growing process? And tip, uh, excuse me, tool. I keep wanting to skip to tips, but we're talking about tools right now. Tool number three is weather. Uh, weather is a really fun one to uh, actually study outdoors. Um, especially on a day like today when it's hot and the sun is out. Uh, you can study rain and snow and sun and it's a fun excuse to let the kids get wet and have fun and splash around while they learn and experiment with things like bottle tornadoes or uh, shaving, cre shaving cream clouds. So those are your three tools for today. Now, the three tips I have are to help you create activities on the three topics of bugs, plants, and weather that are connected to uh, learning science skills. So here we go. Here's number one. It says, when kids engage with science using hands-on experiences like creating their own fossils, this is a great way to build science learning through play, and that is true. Fossils is a fun activity that you can talk about rocks, you can talk about uh, mud and clay, you can talk about dinosaurs, you can talk about, again, bugs and animals uh, that and how they become fossilized. And the best part is you can create your own fossils. You can, if you can get your hands on some actual clay, you can use toys like, and I'm going to stretch over here, I have a box of some activities I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But you can use, this was an old plastic Easter egg that I used um, for an Easter egg hunt, believe it or not. The bugs are out, sorry. Um, and it, as you can see on the front, it has a skeleton, and I don't know if you are going to be able to see this, but inside, it's bumpy. And so the bones from the front are inlaid into the backside, and you can press Play-Doh into it, you can press clay into it, and you can make an impression and then make your own fossil as it dries. Fun activity for kids to do. They always enjoy that. Um... Number two, getting kids involved in exploratory activities that teach the process of how things happen is a great way to learn about the process of nature. Um, an example of this is, let's see, I do have it. I have it right here. I have an activity. I don't know if you're going to be able to read this. You won't because it's backwards. And it says, grow a pumpkin story cards. Hi, thanks for joining us. We are learning, in case you are just joining us, about science skills and building science skills using play activities. So this is a plant story that has visual cards. It's a little hard to see if I'm showing you this outside. So this is the flower bud of a pumpkin plant. A full grown pumpkin. Pumpkin seed. And there are a few more. And you can talk to the child, depending on their age, about how do they think that a pumpkin or a tomato plant or a strawberry plant or even a flower would grow. What does it start from? What does it then become? How does it turn into from the thing that it starts from into food that we can actually eat? Uh, this is a fun exploratory activity that you can do to get kids engaged in uh, exploring and learning and building science skills around food or plants or nature or even um, animals, to be quite honest. You could create a story like the pumpkin story about 
well, how does a bird grow? Or where does a bird live? How do they make a nest? Uh, different, different ways you can use these activities. And if you have any questions about these activities, go and leave them below and I will answer them either live here or I will answer them after the video. Um, I might have to find some shade and actually uh, answer those questions. So that was tip number two. Um, tip number three is inv investigating the stages of how plants, trees, flowers, and even food or animals grow. Um, it's, a, again, a great way to bring play and learning together. And what I like to do is create little cards that have questions on them that get kids question um, thinking about and kind of leading them through the learning process of how things grow or develop. You can ask questions like, well, what does a bird come from? Or what does a pumpkin start from? Or what do I have to do to get a plant to grow? What, what feeds a plant? What kind of care does it need? Things like this that also aid in starting a conversation, which builds verbal skills around um, learning as well. So now I want to share with you my top 10 favorite activities for learning and building science skills. So number one is Dino Dig. This one is really fun. You can put, you can get a container, um, whether it's a bowl or uh, a dish pan, or if you have a sandbox, it works even better. Whoops, that was a moth. <laughs> Tried to go in my ear. Um, and you can bury, you can, depending on how creative you are, you can create your own dinosaur bones um, using things like popsicle sticks or uh, Q-tips. I've even cut them out of, found some really cute ones online, which maybe I'll take a picture and add it to this video below. Um, actual cut out din dinosaur bones with the little vertebrae in them. Um, and you bury them either in sand or a material like this. I'll show you some right here. Uh, there you go. This is just um, some hay used for floral arrangements. And this lighter, shinier one is actually Easter basket grass, believe it or not. And I use it for a wide variety of things. Learning about bugs, learning about animals, learning about all kinds of outside fun things. Um, and you can bury either the dinosaur parts or the actual dinosaurs in these materials and give the kids tools to dig for them. You can give them little paintbrushes and they can actually go on an excavation. And for older kids, you can give them clues as to, let's see, what part of the dinosaur they're digging for or what type of a dinosaur they're digging for. You can come up with all kinds of creative questions and it gets them further engaged in the learning activity. So, number two is, again, um, like we were talking about a second ago, how does it grow? This is uh, can be for plant or animal um, exploration, talking about the growing process of how things evolve. Uh, and again, you can be really creative on how you want to use this activity. Um, I, I like to use it in a lot of different ways, a few of which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, number three is who does it belong to? Now, this is a sensory thinking game. Um, I like to take a bucket. I'm going to try to, let's see if I can just flip the camera instead of actually turning the camera. Is it going to let me turn it? There it goes. I'm actually going to turn the camera this way. So as you can see, I have a bucket here. And I have bugs... And I have the grass, I have um, 
some rubber insects. I have all kinds of fun stuff in this bucket. And what we do with this one is the kids can dig around in it. I have some pots here that they can use to scoop. They can use to sort. They can, um, the kids this morning were filling it full of the grass and dumping it and filling the different buckets. So you can do all kinds of fun stuff with the sensory bin. But what I like to do is break up and use loose parts to get the kids exploring how to, what things go together. So, for instance, here, I'll flip this back around here. Okay. Can you see me? There we go. So, I like to use sensory experiences to get the kids involved in hands-on and I will often use pictures of parts of items and bury them in a sensory bin like what I showed you and encourage them to engage in a game like I Spy. You can even do like a, a real life version of I Spy and you can give them clues as to what they're looking for. So you can, for instance, say, I spy something that helps a dog find bones that they've buried in the ground. And if they dig around and they guess a couple of times and they can't figure out what it is, then you give them another clue. And then you give them another clue. I don't like to give too many clues because if you give too many clues, then it kind of takes all the fun out of it, of the trying to figure it out and use their creative thinking skills on their own. Um, number six is how can we reuse this or turn it into something else? Again, this comes back to plants. This comes back to food and cooking and gardening. Um, gardening is a great activity to get kids involved in this time of the year. Um, so you can walk them through the different plants that you might have planted in the garden and say, okay, well, we're growing cucumbers, or in my garden this year, we're growing tomatoes, and we're growing chives, and we're growing raspberries, and all kinds of fun stuff. So then you can get them talking about, well, what can we use this food to create? and get them to maybe dictate a story to you about what they could use raspberries or tomatoes or, you know, cucumbers and turn those foods into. You can talk about turning them into things like spaghetti sauce or salad or all kinds of fun stuff. Again, how creative you are is going to depend upon the age of the child as well. Like I was talking about earlier, um, creating things like tornadoes in a bottle or like what we did this morning, another way of talking about science, is I took out, and I don't have it with me, um, I took out the shaving cream. Oh, but I do have this and I can show you. took out the shaving cream and I also took out cotton spiderweb that is used for Halloween decoration. And you can talk to them about spider webs and who lives in a spider and how do they make a, who lives in a spider? Did I say that? Whoops. I meant who who lives in a spider web and why do they build a spider web and how do they do it and why do they do it and and what is it made of and how could we make our own and 
great ways to get them, again, using their creative thinking skills, engaging those small, small motor skills. You can use all sorts of fun things like the cotton, string, and earlier this morning we used shaving cream to create some. And I do have some pictures. I'll post those later. There is actually an event for this live that I will try to um, save this live into, as well as sharing all those little extras. Um, building a volcano. That's another fun one. You can use um, Mentos and a bottle of Coke. <laughs> and you can bury the bottle of Coke in um, build up brown Play-Doh all the way around it. Um, all kinds of fun ways that you can make volcanoes. Uh, and then you can, of course, drop the Mento inside the bottle of Coke and let it explode. There are all kinds of fun, creative ways you can use... Uh, that you could build volcanoes as well. You don't have to just use Mentos and Coke. Depends how messy and creative you want to get. I happen to go extreme messy whenever possible because why skimp on a fun learning experience when messes can be cleaned up? Um, oh, this is a fun eye-hand coordination one. What will stack the highest without falling? This is another great science um, activity that also engages eye-hand coordination. And you can use different containers. This is um, a cleaned and sterilized dog food container that has colorful lids on them. Uh, here's one, actually, that I use for this activity. I don't know if you can see that I actually have some colored paper in this one. So it's a little weighty. It doesn't blow away in the wind. Um, but I've put rocks in them. I even put um, some of these bugs that I was showing you earlier in there, um, just so that it, it they use different weights. Um, I use cleaned out uh, water bottles as well, and we play Simon Says Construction with the different size bottles and getting them to... Um, stack the different containers on top of each other to see how far they can go without knocking them over. It's a, a fun trial and error activity uh, that the kids really enjoy. Kids of all ages actually enjoyed that one when I've done it in the past. And last but not least, what will mix or separate? Um, you can do this again with recycled uh, water bottles and make little lava lamps. You can mix sand and water and see what happens, glitter and water, oil and water, um, paint and oil is a fun one, all kinds of fun things. And there, then you can seal them and drop different um, solids, like beads or confetti or all, all kinds of stuff into the different layers. And they're reusable um, lava lamps that can be used for all kinds of fun activities. So those are my top 10 favorite science activities. And now I'd like to issue you a challenge. I like to call this my weekly Wednesday challenge. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is join my Facebook group or comment on my Facebook page where this should be living to and share your favorite science activity with us. How do you use how do you enjoy using play to learn and engage science skills? I hope you've enjoyed this live. I am going to be back next week, next Wednesday, and I will be doing another one. I will have a whole new set of activities and another uh, theme that I will be sharing tips and tools on. But before I go, I want to show you another fun science um, play activity that I have used. Uh, it might be easier instead of leaning over to try to just flip the camera. There we go. This is a barn that I have had for a very long time. Trying to turn with one hand is not the funnest thing in the world. Sorry about that. So these are a bunch of fun 
farm animals and these little fences have velcro on the bottom of them and they stick up and I have some fun hay bales that can be stacked up where the hay bale go there's the hay bale and there is some water and there's some gravel pathways and we have we'll move the cow over a horse and all the animals have their baby version so you can talk about the different names for an adult horse and a baby horse and it's a fun make-believe play activity that gets kids engaged in learning about science and specifically animals. This was a fun one that they had a lot of fun with this morning as well. Um, I've had this one for a really long time, so I don't really remember where I got it from, um, but you could even create your own barn using recyclables or stuffed animals or all kinds of things. Boxes, kids would love that to build their own barn using boxes. So I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Play, Learn, Grow Weekly. And again, I am your creativity producer and professional mess maker, Teresa, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.